Hello everybody, good morning. What a day to be alive. We want to welcome you to the Christocentric meal. A daily reflection of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Abel, Damina is my name and I'm excited today to welcome every one of you. Help us invite friends, loved ones and everybody around you. Let's feast in the word. Let's receive some word this morning to set us going for the whole of this day. What a blessing to be able to fellowship every day in the light of God's word. Co-hosting with me this morning, I have my wife joining, Dr. Rachel Damina. Honey, good morning. Greet our viewers. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Christocentric meal. Have nice fellowship with us this morning. Amen. 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 Let's pray together as we get in the word for the day. Father, we rejoice and we thank you for the blessing that we have in Christ. We thank you because of the life of God that lives in us. You are our life. You are our life. Everything that you are is what we are. And we acknowledge that today. We acknowledge your righteousness in us. We acknowledge your life in us. We acknowledge that you are our sanctification. We acknowledge that you are our redemption. We acknowledge that all of your authority is ours. And we acknowledge everything that you have made available to us in your resurrection mm. and at your exalted place. And today we function in that full capacity, that authority completely. And we pray for everyone watching today that the eyes of their understanding be flooded with light, that they be strengthened with might in the inner man by the spirit, that your word will come alive in their understanding, your word will come alive in their thoughts, and that they will operate full capacity and fulfill everything that they ought to by reason of the enablement that we have in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the blessing today. We see our true reflection in you through the word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We've been looking at Jesus exalted. And we've been looking at his exalted position and how we are, you know, joint heirs with him in that position. How that all that he has obtained in his resurrection, he obtained it with us in mind. Or he obtained it for us. You know, uh, Ephesians says he has quickened us together. He has raised us up together. He has made us sit together with him in the heavenlies. So everything he did was with us in mind. It was for our benefit. We are beneficiaries of Jesus' work. His sacrificial work was for our benefit. We benefit today by acknowledging everything that it has provided us. Authority, influence, power, kingdom. And it has caused us to sit together with Christ in the heavenlies. We are in authority here. We are fully in charge. It has given us that position where we are victors, where we triumph all the time because his triumph is our triumph. His life is our life. Galatians 2.20, Brother Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Mm -hmm. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the, the faith of the Son of God. That's what his exalted office has made available to all of us because we are now brothers. What is his is ours. Praise God. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he perfected forever them that are sanctified. By one offering. One offering. It's not like the Old Testament priests, you know, who had to be offering sacrifices every year, mm. every year, every year. They offered it every year because what they were offering had no power to bring permanent solution. So it could temporarily only cover their sins for that one year duration. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Mm. Yesterday we saw that the right hand of God is the regency on high. Jesus is the regent. That is, God handed over everything to Jesus and everything has been subjected to Jesus minus God himself. Mm. That's what it means for Jesus to be seated at the right hand. But observe, he sat down after he had offered the sacrifice, mm. after he had purged our sins, after he had given us his life, after he had risen from the dead, after he has raised us up together with him, he sat down announcing that this job is done. Yes. And you know, he says from henceforth, he's sitting down in us, expecting all his enemies to be made his footstool by us. 
So there are things that must happen because he is in that position. In historical times, when you win a war, it is not just good enough to win the war literally. What happens is that the man in charge now demonstrates it. Mm. Hence, the footstool is something literal. Wow. In the Old Testament, in the shadows. So you put them under the foot. Yes, when you win a war, mm. you have to demonstrate your victory literally. Yes. Now, in Joshua 10, 24, we can see a shadow of that. Mm. Joshua 10, 24. And it came to pass, when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said unto the captains of oh. the men of war, yes. which went with him, come near, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them. So they had to, so that, that's how to demonstrate victory. It. You bring your enemies, put and them down, and put of your, your enemies. neck on their necks. Mm -hmm. Literally, mm. that was in the Old Testament, yes. under the shadows. First Kings might. chapter 5, verse 3 also. Yes. Thou knowest how that David thy father could not build an house unto the name of the Lord his God, for the walls which were about him on every side, until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. He put them under the soles of his feet. It was to prove that you are in charge. Mm. It was to use your authority. It means to literally pounce on your defeated enemies <laughs> to show publicly what you have done. Yeah. Now you will now parade them on the streets. Yeah. You'll parade all your enemies, enemies on the streets. Your captives. Yeah, your captives. Now, Second Chronicles Making chapter, sure the, chapter mm. 9, verse 18. And there were six steps to the throne with a footstool of gold which were fastened to the throne and stays on each side of the sitting place and two lions standing by the stays. So a literal throne was built in the mm, Old Testament. Yes. You know, like that with a footstool where the king will show his authority. Mm -hmm. The Lordship of Jesus today is exercised through us. Mm. Through us. We are Jesus' feet. We are the, the place through which he demonstrates exercises, displays his authority. Mm. He displays his power and influence. We are, the, we are the people. We are the ones through whom Jesus is manifesting his victory today. That's why he lives in us and he's waiting for us to make his enemies his footstool. You know, we are the ones to exercise the authority of Jesus mm. on the earth today. In the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 24, to 27 applies what we just read in the Old Testament, in New Testament reality. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. He must reign till he has put all his enemies under his feet, all his enemies. See, he says when the end comes, he will have put everything under. And then he will also hand over everything to God the Father. Yeah. But he is going to reign. That's why we reign with him. Mm -hmm. They that receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness, they reign in life. That reigning is Jesus reigning with us and through us. Mm. And he will reign until all enemies. The word mm -hmm. reign is the word rule. He will rule. He will reign. Like we say, the reign of a particular president. The reign of a president. Mm. Like in America oh, today, monarchy. there was the reign of mm. Barack Obama. Yeah. And when that reign was over, rulership. Donald Trump took, took over. over. Okay, so the reign, the rulership of a particular king. Jesus' rulership is till all his enemies and are brought under, under his feet by the church. Yes, in 27. For he had put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. Yes. So the person that put all things under him is minus. Yes, uh, it's is not exempted. under him. Yes. Yeah, you know, everything is under Jesus, minus God himself. himself yes. That's everything is under that authority, minus God himself. His enemies are not physical. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of people get it wrong. Mm -hmm. You know those churches where they teach you to fire to fight your, your enemies, neighbor as fire your enemies. Your enemies and they, they let them you, die. Let, yes. let you have, let people fall down and be dead in their houses. Then you know that your enemies are dying. That's, yeah. that's not what is. And you know, the other day we said it was yeah. the difference between a suicide bomber and you that's and praying for people to die. Who is praying for people to die? All of you are the same. 
You know, that's, that's, you, all of you are working for the devil <laughs> because God came to that's, save lives. Uh -huh. He said, the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives, mm. but to save them. Yes, have you considered that those people are lost? That's why yeah. they are doing what they are doing. Supposing before you uh -huh. receive Christ, somebody, somebody prayed, prayed for, for you, you to, to die. Also die. So that you have received Christ means you have a responsibility to help, others. To help those people come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Mm. Moreover, your enemy is not human beings. It's not humans. Your enemy is the devil, the adversary. Your enemy, the adversary. The mm. devil goes Our adversary, about the devil. like a roaring lion mm. seeking whom to devour. Devil. So your enemies are not physical. Mm. The word last in the Bible is a show of finality. Mm -hmm. Hence, death is the chief enemy. Yes. The last enemy, the chief enemy is death. That authority, hence, deals with the spiritual and not physical. Oh, yes. The authority of the believer deals with the spiritual and not physical. Jesus will say, my kingdom, my it's, authority is not, not of, of this world, world, meaning it's not physical. We're not called to fight physical elements. We're called to deal with spiritual entities. Mm. Even though some of the physical elements are influenced by the spiritual entities, but when you deal with the spiritual entities, the physical elements will not be able to manifest that level of misbehavior or rebellion. Mm. That's why when you speak in faith, you go to the root of issues. Jesus spoke to the root of the tree. When you deal with things, you deal with their roots. The root of every physical misbehavior is spiritual. Mm. So you exercise authority over the spiritual, you render useless the effect of the physical. Mm -hmm. That's why the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And then he tells you what strongholds are. Imagination, thoughts, reasonings that exalt themselves above the knowledge of God. Ideologies, mm -hmm. you know, all of those are the things that we are to deal with in our authority. We cast down imaginations, mm -hmm. we, we, we pull down strongholds, thoughts, mindsets. We bring them down under subjection to obey the finished work of Christ. And that is where knowledge is critical because mm. the teaching of God's word dismantles mindsets. It dismantles, you know, um, ideologies. Mm. The teaching of God's word uproots satanic installations in men's minds. The devil cannot do anything until he first of all introduces an idea into a man's mind. That's why even suicide bombers, actually they are driven by an ideology. Mm -hmm. Somebody cannot the take mindset. a yeah. Somebody cannot take a bomb and put on his body. He has to believe in something. He must have been, been driven by his being mind driven has by been something. persuaded mm. of a particular ideology, mm. and that based on him. that ideology, that ideology drives mm. his action. Mm. As a man thinketh, so is he. Yes. That's why when your mind is full of Christ, you begin to manifest Christ. Yeah. When your ideology is the finished work of Christ, you want to see everybody liberated from the shackles of darkness mm. because that's what Jesus died for. And that's why your mind must be renewed. Your mind must be centered on the finished work of Christ. Yes. So our enemy is spiritual and our authority is in the realm of the spirit. Mm. We exercise authority. We put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. We put, you gather our loins about with truth. Mm. We put on the shoes of peace. We take on the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit. The believer is well armed against the spiritual forces of darkness. So because our authority is spiritual, that's why we exercise our authority via words. Mm. Because our words rule in the realm of the spirit. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 55 to 57, God further establishes these enemies of ours. Yes. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the victory over death, we have the victory over sin because of what Christ has done. Amen. He defeated death, he defeated sin. So sin shall no longer have dominion over you. So we can now boldly say, death, where is your sting? You've been destroyed. Jesus destroyed him that had the power of death, mm -hmm. which is the devil. Oh, grave, where is their victory? There's no victory in the grave because even those who died in Christ will rise. Mm -hmm. So death has no victory anymore. Mm -hmm. The believer has victory. Mortality shall put on immortality. Mm -hmm. Corruption shall put on incorruption. Hallelujah. We shall be changed in a moment in the tingling of an eye. That's the victory of the believer. Oh, yes. Death has been eternally, permanently destroyed. Jesus has disarmed death completely. It has no power over the believer anymore. 
the believer is in Christ. Mm. And what is obtainable in Christ is life. Mm -hmm. The law of the spirit of life in, in Christ, Christ Jesus. has set us free. So that's why Brother Paul would say, thanks be to God, mm. which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. In Christ Jesus, we have victory over death, we have victory over demons. We have victory over satanic devices. Amen. We have authority over everything Jesus conquered mm. from his grave to the throne. Mm. We have authority over everything, over death, disease, Hallelujah. over everything the devil offers. What Christ has done in the born again man is absolute victory. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Mm. And we are in victory right now. Glory. We win all the time. Hallelujah. We win all the time. Mm -hmm. Today you're going to experience total victory, victory throughout the day. There may be challenges, but you will win. Yes. There may be opposition. It's natural to humanity. Mm -hmm. That you're going through things doesn't mean you're a bad you are person. Abandoned. Mm. That you're going through temptation doesn't mean you're an evil person. Mm. These things will come. Many are the afflictions the of, of the, the righteous. righteous. They will come, but, but the Lord delivers him mm, out of them all. all. James chapter 1 verse 1. Mm. James chapter James, 1 verse 1. a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are, are scattered abroad, tweeting, yes. my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. When you are being tempted, count it all joy. Mm. It is because the devil doesn't have you. That's why he's tempting you. Mm. He's coming after you. It's a sign that he admits that you, you, you don't, belong, in you don't belong to him. Mm. He says, persecution and affliction arise for the, for the world's sake. sake. Not because of uh, Yeah, as you begin to grow in the knowledge of Christ, as you begin to grow in the word of God, suddenly you start, you know, encountering Becoming persecution. A target yeah. of, of evil speaking. Yes. You become just a target of attacks. Be, be misunderstood. People misunderstanding, people mm. attacking you. The devil won't just let you have a party. Mm -hmm. He's going to come after you using different things. But mm. the victory is yours. Yes. You know, it's like the victory is announced before the fight. Hallelujah. Before the you fight courage. started, you're already you the winner. Know. So, so, so you're not going to lose. It. Yes. You're not going to lose. Yes. Whatever is born of God, overcome the, the world. That's and our this story. is the victory. Amen. We have the victory. Even right? our faith. Even our faith. You may go through trials. You may go through temptations. You may go through challenges. Sometimes things look like they are going to work and suddenly everything goes, you know, goes black, goes, goes totally riot. Mm. And you don't know what, where to start from. But remember, Rejoice in the remember, fact that at the end you have remember victory. that the victory is yours. Mm. Count it all joy when we you fall, fall into, into temptations, temptations, trials, tests, yes. knowing this. this. You have to know. Knowing this. is the knowing that gives right. you strength and courage to yes. go through without frowning and hissing or yes. giving up. Knowing this. Mm. You know, any Christianity that tells you that you will have a, a life that is free from problems is, is false. It's fake. Jesus said, the same way I was tempted, you will be tempted. Mm. The same way the world hated me, you will be hated. Mm. For my name's sake. Yes. He said, but be because of good cheer. Because I have overcome. I have overcome the world. So you too are sure of victory. Yes. In the world, you shall have tribulation. Mm. There are days you wake up, all hell Everything breaks loose. Everything is wrong. All hell breaks loose. <laughs> but in, in patience, you possess, possess your soul. Possess your soul. You, you, you possess your soul. In nothing terrified by, by the adversary. adversary. In patience, you possess your soul. Mm. You look at the challenges and circumstances and you hold yourself together. Yes, yes. And you remind yourself who you apart. are. You remind yourself what you have. You remind yourself that Christ is in you. And then you, you, you confidently confront the challenges, mm. knowing what you carry. Mm. The greater is he that is in you mm. than he is that is in the world. Amen. Knowing that, Causes this victory that we have in Christ Jesus to, to become your reality. Mm -hmm. And today you win. Yes. You win over every yes. challenge. You win over every trial. You win over Jesus. every temptation. Mm. And everything that the devil will ever offer, Father, you have Shaka, victory over it himself. today in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. And Father, we join faith Thank today you, with Jesus. everyone going through, through circumstances and situations and mm. challenges mm -hmm. of life. You already have won. Mm. The victory is already yours. Oh, yes. You are in dominion. You are in authority. You reign over circumstances. You reign over devils. You reign over demons. You reign over things of this life. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord has delivered you from them all. Mm. You have won. You have defeated the devil. You are not weak. You are not weak. You are not a coward. You are not weak in the name of Jesus. Amen. You are born of God. You have overcome the world. Oh, yes. You have overcome challenges. Therefore, we refuse you giving up. 
we refuse you surrendering to hopelessness. Yes. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you are begotten again to a lively hope by the resurrection from the dead. What could not defeat Jesus cannot defeat you. Yes. So we steer up the champion in you. We steer up the giant in you, the life of God in you. We wake up. We wake up that life mm. and we command you to acknowledge and begin to experience that victory Glory. right now. Hallelujah. Satan, we command you cease in your maneuvers. Mm -hmm. We rebuke you wind. We rebuke you waves. We rebuke you storms. We rebuke you challenges in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Every evil report, we silence you today. Yes. We Quench silence you, you today. Mm. We believe the report of God's word. Mm. And we declare that you win every situation. Mm -hmm. And that at the end of it all, you'll be the last man standing. Yes. We decree that you are strengthened with might in the inner man by the spirit. Mm. You are strengthened with might in the inner man by the spirit. Christ dwells in your heart by, by faith. faith. You are rooted and grounded in love. You are kept by the power of God. Satan, take your hands off in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we announce your victory today. Mm -hmm. You win over every situation. By the end of this day, you will look back and Hallelujah. celebrate the victory that is already yours. Glory. Thank you, Father, for the blessing. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you that you always cause us to triumph. Try. Thank you for giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you praise. Glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Whoa, what a blessing this morning. Praise blessing. God. Mm -hmm. Look, you need to get a copy of this book and spend the rest of your day reading through and meditating through the word. You must take this word, put in your mouth, meditate on it, meditate on it, and speak it forth. You keep speaking it. You keep speaking it until it becomes your literal reality. Praise God. Mm. Order for the materials. Get them for friends and loved ones. And don't forget, you are the one in victory today. Mm -hmm. Only one word for our viewers before we go. Yes, don't forget, you have authority. You have authority over everything that Jesus defeated from the, from the grave to the throne. You have authority over them. So let no situation or anything intimidate you today. Go possess what is yours. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And remember, you are in the throne with him. Yes. Where he reigns, you reign. Yes. We reign. We reign. Sickness doesn't reign. You are the one reigning. Mm. You know, challenges are not reigning. You are reigning. Make your mouth very loud. Mm -hmm. You know, speak loudly. Be confident in what Christ has done. And you will be the last man standing and smiling. Amen. When we're excited, tell people about what's going on here. And tomorrow we're looking forward to spending more time with you in the world. And for the rest of the day, enjoy Christ. Mm. Till we come again your way tomorrow. Same time, same, same platforms. This is Rachel Damina and Abel Damina say that the kingdom mm -hmm. of God is in power. Amen. Praise God. Look at Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Damnable heresies. They create heresies, opinions, a sect in the church. You know, it's like some people just came up and said, um, anybody wearing jeans will go to hell. Have you had that teaching before? Yes. Anybody who wears jean trousers will go to hell. So they'll put ushers to be checking people as they're coming. If you're wearing jeans, they set you aside. You cannot enter their church. That is a damnable heresy. What is that? A damnable heresy. That's heretic. That's, a heret that's heretic. When you attribute the finished work of Christ to a piece of cloth, to a piece of material. Amen. And some will say, if you don't pay your tithe, things will be tight. That's heresy. And some people even took it to, a, to the extreme. If you don't pay your tithe, you will go to hell. Uh -uh. And somebody asked me somewhere, do you believe in tight? I said, no, sir. Do you believe in tight? I said, no, I don't believe in tight. He said, why? I said, I believe in Jesus. There's no scripture that says you believe in tight. He says, believe in the Lord Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I don't believe in tight. Is it clear? I don't believe in tight. Who do I believe in? Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I don't believe in tight. I believe in Christ. 
And that's when some people get angry with me. Is it, uh, Dr. Damira is telling people not to pay tithes. He's telling people not to give at all. How will we sponsor the things of God? You have not listened to me. You have itching ears. Tight is not giving. Tight is not giving. Tight is tax. It's a taxation system. That's why they say pay. In giving, we don't pay. Because giving has to do with generosity. What you pay is, it, it means you are owing. But where Christ is concerned, we owe him nothing. What he did for us was not for us to pay. It's called grace. It's called grace. What Christ has done for us is grace. Are we in the house? I was watching one woman preaching today in one of those churches in Lagos. He said, and now you hear people are going around saying, and not, that's exactly what I was thinking. And now you go around hearing people are going around saying, Christ has paid it all. Christ has paid it all. You don't need to do anything. My brother, there is generational cause in your family. Even though Christ has paid it all, you still have a part to play. That is Christ plus for salvation. She was busy. Blowing like fire. And I know it's us she's referring to. Us. You know us? Us. <laughs> they are going everywhere. It's a sect. A sect of the Pharisees who are also believers. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They are also believers. But in their minds, their minds are still locked up with the law of Moses. It's their opinion. To say if you don't pay tight, you will go to hell. It's a personal opinion. It's not a doctrinal teaching. That makes that, that group of, it makes a gr that group of people a sect. A sect. A group with an opinion that is not scripture. Heresies. It's a self-chosen opinion. That's the meaning of the word heresy. A self-chosen opinion. And that word heresies, H-A-I-R-E-S-I-S. Heresies is taken from the word herium. Heriomi, heriomi. It means personal. And it's used for strong views. A personal strong view. And the people who bring these heresies into the church, they are very strong about it. They will bring it out of a verse of the Bible that does not have solid exegesis. Just a verse. Then they will carry that verse and stretch it beyond the call of duty. And they will conclude on that verse without any other contextual exegesis on the verse. They won't even read the verses before they will not read the verses after. They just take, in fact, sometimes it may be a sentence in a verse. A sentence. And that's why they hate contextual teaching like we do. Because once we show up, light has come. Once we show up, light has come. We now dismantle what they have done and bring exegesis. And suddenly, what it meant is not what was said. I don't know if you understand it. That's why sound Bible teaching has no alternative. And that's why a pastor must get involved with thorough teaching of scripture. Hallelujah. And sometimes this kind of issues cause division in the church. It causes division. And somebody said to me, Dr. Damina, you are the ones causing division. I said, no, you're wrong. We are not causing division. We are teaching the Bible. It's you people that has no scripture. To back what you claim that are causing division. Because everything we have said, we gave overwhelming scriptural evidence with contextual interpretation of the text. Is that true? So we are not the ones causing, is they that have abused the scriptures and have taught the scriptures out of context that are causing confusion to the body of Christ. Not we. Strong opinion forced on the gospel. Strong opinion. 
You hear them say, when praises go up, blessings is fraud. It's fraud. No praise is praise enough to bring a blessing down. No praise is praise enough. If you like praise in mud and bring blood out of your body, it cannot bring down any blessing. No praise can bring any blessing down. None. Why do we praise? We praise to reinforce, to reinforce what we believe in the scriptures in our understanding. That's why what we sing must agree with what we are taught. Hello, I hope you have been blessed by that wonderful message. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. For you to grow spiritually, you need to hear, study, and meditate on the word. You need to not only hear, but to also read and see. And that is why you need the Christocentric meal. This is a book that reveals to you who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. This book interprets and breaks down the word into daily meals, making it easier for you to understand and study, build up and strengthen your inner man, all the while growing your relationship with God and your confidence as a believer. To order this life-changing book and other titles, DVDs and CDs by Dr. Abel Damina, call the number or email the address on the screen. Starting the new year with this book is your first step to guaranteeing an enriched life and new year.